Today, I tried out the new Scan My Tesla software on my Samsung tablet, which is connected to my OBD Link adapter on my Model 3. The current release version is 1.9.1, but I have a beta version of 2.0.5, which adds some interesting new features. Right now, the software's creator is working on incorporating features from the new Apple version of this application to Android. So far, I like what I see. Let's start off with the biggest change. When you start up the Android app, it displays the new dashboard page by default. By flicking to the left or right, you can change the dashboard to show two gauges, a single gauge, another single gauge, and three gauges. The first gauge has rings. The outside ring is the state of charge, then front motor power, rear motor power, and battery power. You can flick the individual gauge up or down to change to another data view. The next one down lists temperatures for the front stator, rear stator, battery inlet, and cell. As we go one more down, this one has front torque, rear torque, and the center displays the speedometer. This next graph shows the battery coolant range from heating target, outside, passive target, and cooling target temperatures. The cells are shown below the line here. The other graph shows the powertrain coolant graph which includes the inlet and stators, as well as passive and cooling target temperatures. Flipping down to the next option, we have the battery graph. It shows the buffer, nominal, nominal full pack, kilowatt hours when new, and also the current expected kilowatt hours. On top, it displays the battery degradation. The bottom graph shows the current range and full range. The nominal full pack is 68.1 kilowatt hours, 77.8 when new. Interestingly, it shows I have 12.46% degradation after two years. Flipping down to the last optional gauge data choice shows the same battery capacity graph as the previous one, but the bottom graph now shows the cell voltage numbers. Let's move back to the original two-gauge view. I think I'll keep the speedometer on the left gauge. As you can see, the right gauge can be changed to any of the options as we have seen on the left side. Let's leave it on the power gauge. Here are some views of the gauges while driving. I had to re-record the review of this software update. My first video had beta version 2.0.5, and it had a few bugs with the data and setting selections. That is now fixed in version 2.0.7. The next new feature is the full screen button, which is located on the upper right side of the screen. When you click on this button, the current page fills the screen, which makes it easier to see and removes the distracting menu bar on the top. This was one thing I suggested in my previous video on this software. There is a new dashboard settings menu on the lower right of the screen. Here is what it shows. You have an option choice between the Model 3 and Y and the Model S and X. You can hide the front motor or show the front motor, which is helpful for rear-wheel drive owners. You have before Tesla System 2020.20.5 and after. Coincidentally, I just got the 2020.20.12 update during the shooting of this video. And also in between the beta 20.0.5 and 20.0.7 of this app. You have kilometers versus miles, Celsius versus Fahrenheit, 
and torque Newton meters versus foot pounds. By pressing the upper left drop down box, you can switch between the different data pages performance, speed, temps, HVAC, battery, total, trip, and all are similar to the previous releases. When you click on the All page, you can see that there are some new data points. For example, battery degradation. More data will be added as discovered over time. Most of the menu options have stayed the same so that they should be familiar. For example, the wrench menu has the settings. Here you have to choose Bluetooth device, which is the OBD Link MX in my case and there are several other options you can adjust. So in summary, the beta unveils some new features, and while I experienced some bugs in the earlier beta versions, the latest seems to be much improved. I have just started using it and will communicate any issues to the software developer. There is also an iOS version of this app for Apple devices and requires an OBD Link MX Plus adapter. If you are interested in this Android app and have the OBD Link adapter, the web link is in the video description. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.